back in my mother's side of the family. Land has been passed on through the generations. And my mom actually sold a quarter of land in Illinois, which they used to purchase this place. And uh, we lived over at Woonsocket, that's where I grew up. My parents bought this place in the early 1960s. The history of this place is that there was a renter on here, one renter, same renter for 35 years. And he was here because he was a good grass manager. I remember when my parents purchased this place that it was predominantly native grasses and uh, so much warm season grass, I think that my dad planted and, and the renter too planted a uh, pasture to crested wheat grass so they would have some cool season grasses for grazing. And now we are predominantly brome and bluegrass, which are cool season grasses. So that's our biggest conservation challenge now is limiting the invasive uh, cool season grasses, introduced species, and try and bring back the native grasses. Oh, well, I met Jean about two years ago. She was looking for a tenant to bring cattle up here. And it's been a pretty good working relationship ever since. She's been really good to us. I mean, she's taught us a lot of things. Taught us a lot about soil health, this rotational grazing. And... You know, my dad practiced rotational grazing and Van did too, the guy that lived here. And uh, they, they had, I don't know, this place had four or five pastures and, and they were rotated rather than doing one pasture season long, whatever. But um, now this place has 20 pastures. We qualified for the Equip program a few years ago and have five new watering points because of that, which has just been massive improvement for our utilization. Because there were pastures that we couldn't graze when they needed to be grazed because the water was a limiting factor. This is Mark's second year with me. And you know, he's been open to uh, the things that I do. I really have appreciated Mark. Uh, if I need help, Mark comes with a, a good attitude and comes quickly. I got about half my herd up here and half my herd south of here. I lease from three people now, but Gene has the most intensive program. I mean, my calves come off heavier up here by about 70, 80 pounds every year. Fly control is a lot easier with this rotational grazing. Seems like you get them, you know, constantly moving. The flies don't catch up quite as fast. It's a little bit more work, but I mean, Jean takes care of the vast majority of it. I mean, she calls me when she wants to move them. I show up here, we move them, and I get back on with my work. I mean, she's really instrumental in all this. I mean, she takes the majority of the work and kind of puts it on her shoulders. And if she needs help, she calls me. I come up here and help. And I mean, it's a really good working relationship for me. I first met Jeannie Oh, maybe five years ago, and I, I came out and did a, a rangeland inventory on, on her operation, and she was very interested. She always has questions, and she always wants to know more, and, and not that I always have those answers, but uh, she just has such a, a strong desire to find, find the answers. Working with her renters to use the, the livestock as a tool to better manage the grass. For landowners who were like, like me, coming in from 35 years in the city and just feeling so disconnected, um, it was so critical for me. I mean, it really put me on the map to have someone tell me to uh, go to the South Dakota Grassland Coalition to connect with those guys because, um, yeah, they've, they've just got their ear to the wall. They've got their, their producers, boots on the ground producers, and they don't just talk theory. They, they've lived it. My two pieces of advice would be go to YouTube and find Alan Savory TED Talk. And the other thing is to make a connection with the South Dakota Grassland Coalition and their website is, is phenomenal. The NRCS uh, people are phenomenally helpful as well. You know, are cattle good for the, the earth? Are cattle bad for the earth? It's, it's, it's management. Is, is your management good for the earth? You know, cattle, uh, 
have much to contribute. What would we do with all of this grass if there wasn't something to consume it? The cows are my gardeners and my uh, landscapers, you know. The fact that they come along and you know, the cows use it, the ripping and tearing of the grass stimulates it to grow more. I think that there's something about the nurturing aspect of grazing cattle and moving cattle. And I mean, I get so much fulfillment. These aren't even my cows. And I love seeing them go on to fresh grass and, and uh, I love connecting with them. They were all crowding around my four-wheeler the other night and you know, one of them was actually nibbling on my hat. I love the, the connection with them and, uh, and seeing them get fat and do well. You know, I love that. I love seeing them be healthy. So, and I think that that's maybe a big draw for women in agriculture is the, the nurturing part of it.